Hello? <laughs> so what is Seek's test? Seek's test uh, allows you automated testing of Wine and Crossover and virtually any XSpace application under Intel, Mac, OS X and Linux. If you want to uh, see how it works, I encour encourage you to go to this website right here. And that's actually what I do as well. Uh, the basic architecture looks like this. Uh, you have the CX test server, which is in the same time the web server, uh, and you have some kind, some set of tests which you run nightly. Those tests are running on different platforms, Mac and various flowers of Linux, and they submit the emails uh, with the results to central server. Then it is possible to view such results via browser and also to analyze the results by uh, administrator CX test. Uh, there is also the CX test regression server, which is responsible for finding regressions. Uh, if you find some situation where obviously there was a regression, that machine can find it, but this kind of feature is not finished yet. Good. Uh, so that was the quick idea what CX test is. And now we proceed to goals we presented last year on WineConf, and we will compare uh, what we what we had and where we are today. If I could make it full screen, that would be great, but it looks like F5 doesn't work anymore. Oh, okay. <laughs> Disabled. <laughs> Oh, I have it in the background. Correct. Wow, thanks. <laughs> so, uh, last week we, we promised that we are going to work on website. The website basically contained information we needed, but the two problems were that it was very slow and uh, the information we need was there, but not presented in a way which is easily usable. So we uh, we did a complete the redone, uh, including underlying DB model and conversions and stuff like that. Uh, a CX test is installed, could be installed in both in two ways. One of them is download the binaries, no binaries, the source code from repository, compile yourself. That's the hard way. So to make it easier for end users. We b provide so-called CX test.sh script, which installs on your machine binary uh, version of CX test, and uh, basically tries to make it user-friendly, <coughs> so more people can test. Well, uh, we do not need a compilation of CX test anymore. It's distributed in binary form. We still need, as a part of the compilation of the installation process, compile wine, which takes long. It's normal process like make checkout and compile and everything, but it's uh, wrapped by script. Well, we also talk about supporting Windows. That that's a long-term plan. We do not have it yet. We could we could talk about advantages to have such a feature, but to keep this presentation on a reasonable time level, we skip it. <laughs> but we can if you if you have questions. Well, there are also other things which uh, which are new to CX test. Uh, most noticeable, uh, most noticeably, it's uh, Mac OS X support. It's working on Tiger, and we are working on Leopard right now. There are some libraries incompatibilities which we solve in few weeks. Uh, there is also the Wine HQ support. Uh, we are running or trying to run the Wine make test nightly. We, it works only on Linux not on Mac OS X yet. And uh, we will show this on the presentation later, how does it work. There is also the direct 3D testing. So far we have uh, uh, implemented one application with 3D Mark 2000, and as well it works only on Linux yet. Not on the, uh, not on the other platform yet. Uh, then there was done the job of synchronizing the tested applications with applications uh, supported by Crossover. And uh, we selected the distributions, uh, Linux distribution, which we actually support 
by DistroWatch, we find out that by BistroWatch, the most used ones are Ubuntu, OpenSUSE, and Fedora Core, so we install them and keep them updated. Uh, by the way, if you have any questions while I'm talking, feel free, or we will have the discussion also after. Uh, additional things, well, as we are collecting more and more results, we find out that uh, managing the files is quite uh, hard because the directory which contains the images and log files uh, is big, so we made a compression. There is also on the new algorithm which makes the image matching. We will talk about that. We are using FVWM for better comp configurability because uh, CX test depends on the fact that the same error or bug uh, is, is presented by the same screenshot. This is better achievable if you are using FVWM than, than Metacity. And also there were some minor improvements in CX test framework, which results in better reliability. Okay, uh, we go directly to the website. Now I switch to the mode where I can uh, show you the live data. So you can get impression what kind of information you can find in CX test. Uh, there is the first step, which is raw data. Raw data are basically are basically uh, the data which are submitted by each of the machines. Here you can choose the product, and uh, here you see what was tested, when it was tested, and what was the result. Usually the result is failed because at least one of the applications which is inside failed. For example, this is a gold site which contains many applications inside, and some of them failed. Okay. So it, it's true on Windows, too. It, it just does work, and our test catches that, which, you know. Did you open a bug with a report with Microsoft? No, we, we have <laughs> it's only the SR0 CD if you have one of the SR1 CDs that works. Oh. There's, there's no real bug tracker for Microsoft. That's the problem. Yeah. There is a bug in Microsoft. <laughs> no bugs here. So there are, there are several products supported, and one of them is Wine. And that's the view I have right now. So uh, the Wine is, is running the, the testing machines are running the Wine make test each night. And you can see, for example, this result. You see that most of the things are green. There are some, some red ones. You can see from red ones the log file. This or one of these lines is probably the reason why it is why it failed. Are those being run live? Those are run in the VNC. Actually, I don't know. That's the question for Peter. <laughs> Do we run them in VNC? Yeah, it's uh, running in VNC. That's true. Yeah, there are, there are especially the, the OpenGL test and GDI, which are VNC, affected by VNC. Because the D test nowadays should just refuse to run and say it skipped. Well, yeah, well, in, uh, on our interface, it's, it's smart like failed. But yeah. Yeah, we could we could recall. The make test command should not report a failure; it should report a skip. So make test should give a zero return code; it should report success. Correct. So last year, when we met, we found out that make test worked for exactly one person. <laughs> <laughs> Is that still true? Does anyone ever try? Uh, once in a while, but I. I, I <laughs> Debian, okay. Yeah, but uh, the Debian doesn't work on my machine. It depends if it breaks with different errors on different machines. It's now it's one of this, um, I don't know who tried to fix it, where um, the kind of uh, widget uh, 
Yeah, month call reported uh, success. Yeah. And I get crushes and you need gecko oh, interfaces yeah. occasionally. So I run it nearly daily now. So but So you, you run make fest nearly daily, Marcus? Yeah, but with usually with failures. Usually with failures. Oh, yeah. yeah. Usually with failures. But I investigate new failures, so <laughs> I keep the failure rate stable. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. <laughs> I run make test if I change something in the DLL. I run make test up in that DLL. Yeah, and it sucks when it fails because I have to go back and see does it suck the same way with the <laughs> does it fail the same way with a patch or without a patch? Well, so I mean, with all due respect, shouldn't like this be a streaming priority? I mean, I don't understand why this is it. A red streaming priority that it should be. It seems to me it should be the case that we all should be able to run make fest and it should just work. Yeah. No. Yeah. Great. Would you spend some time trying to make that be true? Uh, yes. Um, uh, go for very much things, but uh, not much. Yes. What 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 is it that makes it fail? Um, well, for me, it's the fungi. Uh, and then at some point, my X server will crash whenever I run not just the fungi, but a lot of stuff. So I have a bad X server, so I stop debugging that. Now I could start again. Um, and I had a, there was a bug in with some fonts. Uh, yeah. And I, yeah, because I have a lot of fonts installed on my machine. And some of the fonts were different. <laughs> <laughs> so well, I think that was kind of fixed by removing the bug, uh, the test in make test. But I found a, bun a bunch of issues there that I want to investigate further and then tackle the other bugs. So really, I mean, really the problem is that no one really cares. <laughs> we, all, we all agree that it would be good to fix, but no one's really, because it's not the differences in font, differences in X server that seem to be causing this. Yeah, well, the, for the X server, it was a buggy X server, I would say. Should we publish like a base configuration for like making make test work, like have a, like a tender box, have a box where we say you have to have these libraries, these fonts? No, 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 no because it should work, no, it should work anywhere. By the contrary. I mean, it should work yeah. in most places except when you have a broken configuration. Well, that's what I'm saying is, is to have a broken configuration, you have to have a defined working configuration. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but working Any configuration <laughs> should not be one, just one configuration should be a lot of everything. Well, I understand that, that's why compatibility looks the same. The machine. You say these versions, the these, the libraries, these versions of these libraries, these versions of these fonts, these versions of these packages. Could work every time. And then you have an OER, for example, OER. Honestly, that's not going to happen. But I, I don't see anybody here changing lots of code just to make it work on Red Hat 5. So I, I completely agree that there's some, some sort of level of compatibility we can sort of require people to have. There's nothing wrong with the compatibility work. The, the first step would be that we actually know about the fact that it fails on a lot of machine, and that's what CX that will show you, and then we can discuss the way how to fix it, but really. Yeah, we can, we can, sure. <laughs> Not so many So the GDI could be. The GDI, uh, what else? Scroll down. How, does anything else fail? Okay. Here? So, so all the odd, that shouldn't be failing. That's a font issue. Oh, actually, no, that's missing. Oh, sorry. Like not compiled in JPEG oh, support. Uh, but it, uh, I'm not sure whether this is the case why it failed. Could be. What the so success, the success. And so that's the case where we would need to change configure so that if we don't have the JPEG. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's continue the others. I 
Um, I don't know what is that. Uh, that that's an issue that um, uh, Dan is trying to um, fix. This is what? That's an issue that Dan's trying to fix. It's a bug in Widow. So it's a little bug? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, oh. so then, how come it works for Alexander? Sorry. Problem. Problem. So why does it work? Does it, does it work for you, Alexander? Uh, RTP 2004. Um, uh, no, it's, it was fading. Uh, I reported it to Dan and I did a few to the one when it passed again. It works with the uh, server the client are loaded at the same time. So there are there are the cases which are the configuration dependent, like that open GL study are the cases where the real bug. Well we have to categorize them and then we decide what to do with them. Of course it would it would require work on the test source code. I mean The bugzilla number is actually it's it links to CodeViewer's internal bug tracker system, and uh, you have to enter that information once you are categorizing the results. So for certain for certain uh, screenshot, uh, the process is that you run it nightly. You see the screenshot appearing. The screenshot is a bug, and you try to replicate the bug. Uh, manually without CX test. If that happens, uh, you enter the bug into the internal bug tracking system. And that bug could be, of course, in if it is a wine related bug, it could be entered also to wine bugzilla. That's not a, not a real issue. Yeah, that's, uh, that's exactly what, what uh, I'm going to talk about right now. For example, uh, we have the crossover product and that crossover product sorry right here uh, right here here is the test and here is the screenshot that screenshot uh, points to some some bug and next time the system sees the same screenshot submitted by test results, it knows that it's the bug number, this one. And uh, so actually, it's mostly screenshot based. They are, uh, well, we, when they arrive, the screenshots, we somehow categorize them by checksums and stuff like that. Then we assign the group to them. And then uh, we have the mechanism how to say about the incoming screenshot fast. You make a checksum uh, whether it is or it is not in our database already categorized. And categorized means that, for example, I am the uh, CX administrator. For that, I have to be locked in. And then I have the then I have the right permission, and I can, I can say about certain screenshot, for example, this one, that it's known case. And uh, the system re remembers, the system remembers uh, that, and yeah, this is how it works. There is also, it's more complicated. There is also, if the screenshot based matching fails, uh, we are using the log files. Because of with each test case, you have you have several attachments. One of them is screenshot. The another is output of the CX test uh, run, and we are matching part of this log file if the screenshot. So the basic idea is because we have a lot of uh, results submitted each day, and to reduce the amount of work which has to be done manually, we are using these kind of things. Okay. Uh, so there is also the administration mode, which is basically write mode, and uh, the administrator's jobs looks like this every day. He comes to work, he logs in, he goes to assignment, and he says, "I want to see auto assign results." In this case, system find based on the screenshot one auto assign result. 
he just reviews that and says, yeah, this is really the bug the system is talking about. Mostly it works. You don't have to really go by by one and, and check. This is just for confirmation. And I see, okay, I have this, this bug, and that bug has been automatically categorized as bug number 165. And uh, I can see how that bug performed last week. If I click on this link, I see, yes, this is happening on Ubuntu, not, not, this is actually happening everywhere except Ubuntu. And uh, yeah, the assignment is correct. So I say correct, assign. Yeah, that's that's possible. Uh, you can you can access that information right here. This is this is the package which failed, and you see, oh, <laughs> this is uh, the one. Okay, I'll show it on the other case. For example, on this. Bronze and here. Oh, sorry. Here you can see the link of all the images which are assigned to this failure, and one of that images is exactly the same one as the one you are trying to assign. Which one is it from those? It's not clear from this interface. Uh, it's one of these, and they are only different by some some little difference. You see, yeah. But there is there is not an easy way how to from web interface see the referring pictures. You have to go by one by one. Okay. Then that was how to assign results, and uh, if the matching logic fails you have the result which appears in unassigned results. Unassigned means that actually system wasn't able to recognize and it's up to you what to do with such a result. Well, you have the proposed failure which is based on the package. Uh, that means the system knows that uh, the FrameMaker 7.1 uh, in past failed with all these failures and you can choose one of them or you can enter your own failure, create new if you want. In this case, we would say it's non CX test error because if you look to to screenshot, you see that for some reason the file could not be downloaded. We don't know why that happened, so we just say, okay, we review this later and assign the bug. So the point is to have every day uh, auto assign and unassigned results clear, so we can we can see the evaluation which works with it, with those data. Oh, and that comes to failures. Failure is actually the set of images which we believe belong to the same bug. For example, failure number 17 has this description and all these images which are similar but not the same belong to that failure. We don't because uh, basically we weren't able to find a utility which reliably says about two pictures these are similar or are not. But, uh, it worked in most cases, but not in all cases. Exactly. Uh, we tried, uh, we tried uh, the GQ view uh, feature, which is find duplicate images. We tried find image dupes, which is the package on, of Debian. Uh, we tried uh, the image magic has also the functionality where you can say the threshold and it will say you by error code whether the si images are or are not similar. Uh, but I did not hear about the utility you are talking about. 
were doing a similar thing as this. We're doing unit testing based on images, but it was designed to test 3D renderers, not uh, applications. But they want they were having problems with uh, test failing because of slight, you know, like differences in CPU or like the slight pixel differences that you couldn't really see. That, uh, That's exactly the kind of problems we have. See, these pictures are obviously the same for a human, but not for not for machine. If you if you could send me a link to that. Uh, to my uh, address, mpilka at codeviewers to link to that, I, I would be. Yeah. Did you try to do the other way? Actually, the testing information, all this, all the information is tested in class name of the window check. Yeah, that is the way. Uh, we could. We could There was the idea by M Michael who said that uh, let's make uh, something like finger fingerprint of the screen from one point of view. That means there are two windows. One of them is named uh, install an information. And uh, yeah, it's possible, but that would limit the product just to wine based testing, which is not so bad, uh, we could do that, because we are trying to, to design this as general as possible, so also the non-wine based applications could be tested. But sure, we could, we, could have the, we could have the small condition if it is a wine application and we have the fingerprint, we could use it. But basically, this problem is more or less solved. We are able to do that as good that the maintainer of the CX testi doesn't have more than 20 or 30 minutes a day and uh, he's able to to handle a large amount of data. So this this is solved. The 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 matching logic and the lo uh, log files logic behind is strong enough to handle that. So this is not a real problem anymore. Actually, for non wine applications, you do. At least something. At least you have you have the name of the of the windows. But uh, when you come to Wine, you have a really deep information regarding the the widgets which are inside the windows. So and those things really uniquely identify the window. In X-based application, is more tricky. Possible, but more tricky. Is it possible to to what? Ability in cases to basically do what a screen reader does. Uh, I'm sorry, I I don't understand the question. We have the data. We have the screenshots. It's just a question of is this screenshot the same as that he's screenshot? He's saying don't use the screenshot. Use um, the accessibility. Use yeah. Accessibility to query the data in an already parsed form, and that way you're insensitive. But but I think Martin's overriding point is that this is really the problem. This was a problem. He's got a solution that's working pretty well. And yeah, we should uh, exactly. On, I think. Yeah. Okay. So uh, once you have this person which makes the regular evaluation of the results, then you can have the several views uh, to this data. All these views are available until the eva uh, under the evaluation tab, and uh, I will proceed from most interesting for wine developers to to most interesting uh, views for crossover developer, and but they overlap. Both are overlapping, so you can. Uh, you can evaluate the one product. I will choose the period which b has uh, which happened quite a while ago. That's because it's the period where I have the relevant data. The for the other periods, just because we do not run it uh, so often and nobody is using it, we do not have data. So that's why. And. I see 
that in this period we had mostly everything worse. That's the green part. But there are some things which did not. And uh, one of them is what we talk about, like because of configuration of VNC and everything. But the point here is that you have some overall view how good or bad the tests are performing. Uh, well, you can click from here. The interface is done in a way that every number which is written there is trackable. So if you want to know what actually fell here, you can always click on it. And you see, in this case, it has been run by two machines, or actually maybe the same machine, but two times. Once it uh, worked, the other ones, it did not, and it failed with this, with this error. So you can, you can check whether the numbers which are here are correctly computed, always. Then what you can see here, for, for example, the crossover product. OK, I go here. Crossover product. I I am interested only in a particular bug number. And I see October 2, 5. Yes, there is some error which happens only on Ubuntu. It happens from time to time. The screenshot is this. We are able to replicate it manually. So we enter the bug in internal bug tracking system. Uh, you can do the similar way also for Seek's test itself, because there are not only bugs in, in Wine, there are also bugs in <laughs> other products like Seek's test. The Seek's test bugs looks like basically the script was trying to do something and it failed for whatever reason. Uh, the action it tried to do could be, in this case, for example, is that this window, for some reason, did not have the focus. So it wasn't able to write the name of the page here. And then it was tried to look for this picture, and it simply failed. So this is classified as a CX test error, and somebody has to look to that, find out what's wrong, fix the test. And as we have more and more supported applications, it's more and more tricky. Uh, the next thing regarding evaluation is that you can evaluate uh, the direct 3D benchmarks. Uh, we have the three machines, but not all of them are able to submit the results because of, because of bugs in Wine. And uh, you can say that you actually want Number 15. This is how direct 3D evaluation looks like. Uh, this is the particular test from 3D Mark 2000. This is the date when the run occurred. And this is the value of the test. For example, this is in the unit which is 3D Marks. There are also the other units like FPS, and I see that the performance is pretty stable on this machine. So probably nothing got broken during the, the time period. You can also click on the result and see exactly what was submitted. It looks like this. It's a file generated by 3D Mark, which is parsed by us, and then the information is presented in this table. OK, then we have the overall product error ratio, what we call ratio. Uh, well, it's not so bad, actually. <laughs> you can see the quite complicated table. I will go very fast through, through the columns. Here is the list of supported applications. This. Uh, yeah. Can you unmaximize 
so that we can actually read the left side of the window? Sure. Ready? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> so here you can see the list of supported application and it's divided into two parts where we support installer and application itself. Of course, when we support application, that means that uh, we support also the installation and also the run of the application, but we test installer in a different way than we test application. It's clear from this, for example, we have 54 applications which we do support by crossover, and but we have much more application tests because one installer could have several tests. And uh, it's most, most complicated for complex applications like Office 3, 2003. That application consists of Excel, Outlook, PowerPoint, and Word. And for each of them, we may have one or more tests. That's what is in this table. So this is actually what is supported by crossover certain version. And uh, the other thing is what is supported by CX test. C supported by CX test means that we have the script for that part of application, for example, installation. So you see the same list as you saw before, but the red lines means we do not have the CX test script for that. And the same for applications. Uh, then there is a column which says how many of those supported by CX test were run during the day. Today, uh, yep, yep, uh, and yeah, yeah, twelve hours on on one machine. And uh, what is most interesting for us is the product failures. Here, you see the errors which are produced by crossover. Some of them, for example, this is classified as installation hangs on the end. Right? Well, yeah. <laughs> and it's a timing bug. It's, it, it, it's not easy to replicate manually. So probably the most of the people are not affected. Yep. <laughs> you can find stuff like this here. And if it is a proven bug, that means we are able to replicate it. You have a pointer to Bugzilla, so. Okay, so, so I have a question. Why, why is having this run on Windows not like an important goal? Because I'm, can you repeat the question? You said that running CX test on Windows has a low priority. Why is that? Well, it's a complex problem which we have to solve the other problems before we can go to Windows platform. Because right now it doesn't uh, even work on level part like OS X. That I didn't say it's not important. It's important, but on the schedule we have, there are other things we need to finish before we do that. Does it make sense? Oh, I should also add that I've tried uh, to run some <coughs> tests uh, on Windows that ran on Wide and stumbled across the problem that all the screenshots aren't the same, right? So any screenshot-based testing methodology is going to be hard to take a set of tests and just move them to another platform. So yeah, it's a big, in other words, it's a big job. Yeah, but it would be really damn useful. Because I, I, I think, think for a couple of the timing the test. Yeah. I think for a couple of the timing bugs, they are probably an issue in the Windows. Well, <laughs> I'm not sure for that. The timing bugs are not that big an issue. The bigger issue is you get your tests right. Mm -hmm. yeah. And you know that the test works on Windows, and then if it fails to run on Wine, you know you have a genuine failure in Windows. Yeah. So that, it's absolutely useful. It's just it's hard. Okay. <laughs> Please, go ahead. Nobody gives a shit about CX test, and I want them to understand why they give a shit. Okay. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
187 tests that Martin wrote to test that shit and validate it, okay? And before we ship our goddamn product, 96% of those tests work, okay? All right? 4% fail. Fine. All right? But, but that gives us a level of confidence that our product really does what it says it does. And that's why this is important. And this is what we should do for wine before wine won that ocean. Exactly. <laughs> And we are trying to provide the platform for that. We are going to have the install fest. Uh, Sorry. <laughs> so we do support the six test log files, and uh, we are in need of support crossover log files, also the wine log files, because they contain the information we need. Then also we are working on the interface, which would allow developers to easily say, okay, this test fails. I would like to have this test run with debugging info plus relay plus s s something. And uh, next day he could uh, pick up the log files generated for him. Then there is the regression support. Uh, wine regressions, it's quite easy to implement, but we already had it. But then we switched to CVS, uh, to from CVS to Git, and we had never time to come back and fix the scripts to make it work again. Then we would like to support the crossover regressions, which is the problem on its own. Why it is, uh, we will discuss on the next slide. It's some bisect problem regarding Git. And then uh, we need to review the test and define the ones which are important for us, and those could be more uh, more complex tests, because right now, basically, what we are doing, we test the default installation of the product and some basic usage of the product. Basic usage means that for Word 2003, it's create document, save document, load document, and if it looks good, we say the application is fine. The text text could be more more complex. Regarding the future long-term plans, uh, right now the control logic of scripts is encoded inside a script. The script is actually the bash or something like that. So all the logic is inside. If you want to port the test to other platform, for example Windows, it's hard. It would be much better to have some XML-based test definition, which is restricted by some schema. So you can port this easily to other platforms like Windows. It would also allow the better maintainability of existing tests, because right now we have around 200 of them. And if we want to change some simple thing which affects all the tests, we have to do that by grab and replace and whatever. Oh, uh, if we have the data structurized in XML, we could do that automatically by some transformation. Then the support for external GUI scripting languages would be nice. For example, AutoHotKey or Yaft. Oh, uh, that would allow us to make it easier for end users to create a test in their favorite tool because we know there are some 
people around will like auto hotkey, so we may have more tests if we do that. Correct, yeah. Actually, this is more, six test is more or less prepared for that. It's more the question of the particular product, auto hotkey, to be able to generate information which can be then later parsed by the server side. So uh, more work is on the side of, of those third party products than on our. And then the final goal is to have it good enough to test any application. For example, right now, if you are a developer and you could be a developer of some widely known application like Firefox, you do not have too much choices how to automate your testing. Uh, Firefox team, they do have some their own things which they are using for testing. The Mono project, I know they have their own things. The Wine project is building the separate site, which is called, I think, test.winehq.org. So uh, there is no standard solution for this. And if we could do this good, then uh, people may use it for standard testing of open source applications. That would be great. Oh. We are coming to the problem I noticed before, the problem with crossover regression testing. I have a picture prepared for that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, uh, I, will, I will find it. It's in my mailbox and not in the saved in the directory. The basic problem is that when you do the merge from wine to crossover, it's not possible for bisect via git to go through uh, separate patches. What you get actually is that you receive a bunch of patches which you cannot clearly identify which one of them caused the regression. Uh, here you can see the view where these lines represent different versions of the product. The yellow line is the crossover, uh, is the crossover product, yeah, 6.1, I think. No, it's a tip version. This is the wine, and this is some different non-related branch. And at some point, we do a merge of wine to crossover, and uh, later, when this when this merge causes the problems regarding regressions, and that happens quite often, we would like to find a patch which caused that. So we do the bisect with starting point somewhere before, for example, here, and the end point after the merge, and when you do bisect, basically in many cases you can end up in this branch. That means that you do not have in your source code any crossover related changes. So it's not, in most cases it's not even compilable, and if it is, uh, it's not clear whether it is going to behave in the same way as it used to, as it would behave if it is crossover. This has been also mentioned by Andrew Morton on his note. And uh, there is so far no solution because it comes from the way how the Git works. So this is the showstopper for crossover regressions. And if you have any proposals how to do that, one of them was submitted by Alexander that we could cherry pick each of these patches and merge them manually, but of course that increases the amount of work